How grateful are you for everything you have? I'm not talking about the gratitude journal where you say you're thankful for a nice home and a warm cup of coffee. I mean truly, feel it in your bones grateful. Our guest today thought he knew what it meant to be grateful, until a gunman opened fire at the cafe where he was working, and he got out alive. And the only thing I could think about the entire time I was running was my daughter, and the fact that there's no fucking way that I'm dying here. You'll hear his story and what it means to him to try to just be a little bit better every day in just a moment. But first, this is the Fitmas where together we learn to develop habits that help us live beyond our mental health struggles to create happier, healthier lives. He's Zach. He lives in the future with his anxiety. He's Jeremy, and he lives in the past with his depression. And we get together once a week in the present to share the obstacles we face and how we overcome them. Thank you so much for being there. It really means a lot that you decided to spend some time with us. Zach is off today, so I brought in a special guest to help me talk about something that I still struggle with after a lot of years of practice, and it's gratitude. Not only gratitude, but what it really means to try to be a little bit better every day, what that actually looks like in practice. I know sometimes my little gratitude practice can feel hollow. The things I'll be writing in my journal just feel like I'm sort of going through the motions, but that can be important, and we're going to talk about why. And I think the same is true for our guest, or it was until recently. We're joined today by Tony Berardo. He's the host of the Humanity and Hashtags podcast. Like us, he's a guy that's just trying to do a little bit better every day than he did the day before. He also seems to have struggles with a gratitude practice, or he did until just the other day when a gunman opened fire at the cafe where he was working. Living through something like that or or any real rock bottom moment can really shift your perspective on life and how lucky you really are not only to be alive, but to have all of the luxuries that you probably have and take for granted. I only recently connected with Tony, and so in order to get to know him a little better, I actually borrowed a question from another podcast that I was on recently. Uh, Basically, you're you're a podcaster, you're a content creator, entrepreneur, dad, all Mm -hmm. these things. Take all the labels away. Tell us who you are. Oh, that is a good question. Isn't it? Take, totally take stealing all, it. It's so good. Yeah, that's great. Take all my labels away. Um, you know, my answer probably would have been different a couple of years ago, but I think I'm just, uh, I'm just a person that's trying to be better every day. You know, that's like if I had to sum up on a daily, like what I need to do. That's what it is. Is I've, I've I've worked really hard the last couple of years to just try to be better every single day at something. Um, so you take away my labels. That's that's what I am. I'm just a, an organism trying to figure this thing out and just be better every single day. What does that look like for you? What does it mean to be better today than yesterday? So for me, it's it's pointing out all the things I messed up on. So whether that's, uh, I'll give you an example. So today I, I freaked out on my dog, not like physically, but I, I caught myself to where I got, cause you know, I'm on like two hours of sleep. Yeah. It was just a rough all night. The things. With, it's, it's exhausting. Yeah. Drains it's, you. it's rough. So, you know, with the, with the dog, they don't know the difference. Right. And normally I can like identify and control it, but like, I haven't been able to work out as much and I haven't been able to do my, my ice plunge. I usually do it every single morning. But, you know, you wake up, you're on two hours of sleep. The last thing you want to do is is work out or hop in like a sauna, right? And, you know, there's all these things that pile up in the morning, like my wife's getting ready for work. I got to feed the baby. She's she's pumping. Like there's this whole, you know how it is. So I realized today, like my, my dog, his name's Oliver, he came up to me and he just wanted attention. And I freaked out. Like I go, I looked at him like he was crazy. And I said, dude, can you just... And I caught myself and I was like, he doesn't know. Yeah. He has no clue. Yeah. And, you know, I'm 38 years old and I'm freaking out at a dog. Yeah. Like I got things to improve on. Right, right. So that was one thing. So I took a step back and I was like, okay, I'm going to go outside. I usually do my grounding in the morning. I, I skipped it today, but I went outside. I took him for a walk um, and it was longer walk than normal and just spent time with him and just kind of decompressed. I normally do my AirPods, listen to a podcast. I didn't do any of that. I just, you know, let the wind hit my ears and just kind of got out of my, like, out of my head a little bit. Mm-hmm. And um, that's something I do a lot. I mean, probably more often than not, that's a big weakness of mine is I, I get very, especially if I don't work out, you probably know. If you don't work out for like a couple of days, 
you're just, you're just a mean, different human. Oh yeah. It's like that, right? Like that's, and I haven't worked out in a couple of days and I haven't done my routine. Um, so that's frustrating. So identify my weaknesses, what I can work on every day. And if I can't physically, it's not tangible. Like I can't do it that day. Like I give you that example. Then I would write it down at the end of the day. So right after work at 5 PM, I write everything down. You can't see it, but I have a whiteboard behind me and everything I have to do tomorrow and everything that I fucked up on today, I write that down and then hopefully I can improve tomorrow on it. So if it's a routine or if it's something work related, hopefully I can improve tomorrow. If not, I'll try to improve this week and then every Monday I refresh it. So that's just like little things I do to try to be a better human. And usually what I found was I'm giving examples of like some work and some personal life, but no matter what your example is, typically that kind of that oozes over into your relationships. So, of course, there's negatives and things I got to work on with my relationship. But I've, I've found that when you work on the other things, for example, snapping at the dog, not working out, maybe uh, stressed out at work. Like if you can fix those things, your relationship naturally just gets better. And yeah. that's instead of like because it is hard to stomach. I need to be a better husband. I need to be better. at the. Typically, that's not the case. Typically, it's everything else in your life that's fucked up. And it's affecting your relationship because most humans, when you fall in love and get married and blah, 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 like you love each other. You're good. It's because if it was just you and you had money in the bank and you had a job that you loved and you were healthy and you had good food, your life is going to be perfect. Yeah. So it's not really the two humans that are typically the issue. In my in my experience, it's normally everything else around your spouse that bothers you. And that oozes into your relationship. So I figured if you if you can fix all that other bullshit, you know everything else happens. And all so. that other bullshit typically is you, right? Like it's it's the That's guy right. you see in the mirror. And you were talking about the routine, and there's so mm. much you know crap online about this routine is the routine, and it's the only way, and you know and all that crap. Sure. But <laughs> but all of it, I think, comes back to, and this is an analogy that uh, I'm gonna another analogy I'll steal from a guest. Uh, everyone always talks about the airplane, right? Like you gotta. You, give yourself the mask before you can help somebody else. But a guest of ours said, no, no, no. The better analogy is the champagne fountain. You've got to fill up yourself at the top and let that overflow and Mm. and pour into the cups below, right? Like the more you can take care of you, the more of you there is to take care of everyone else where what the situation you're in, where you're not sleeping, you're taking care of a a very new child and a dog and a wife and all of the responsibilities. Your cup is empty a lot right now. Like so when that dog mm. comes, you're like, I just don't have it. Don't ask me. Yeah. Not now, not today. And That's so right. that, that routine is key. And, and I'm feeling it myself. Like I was just, I was traveling for a month. I didn't go to the gym. I went to the gym once for, you know, in a month of was, just being yeah. on the road. And, but it was travel, right? It was, vac- it was vacation. I felt great. I was eating real food in, in Europe and it was like, wow, this, this is, this is a great trade off. This is awesome. Mm. But not moving, not doing the hard thing every day, that starts to creep back up. I'm like, what is my purpose? Mm. What am I doing here? Am I good at anything? Am I, am I worthy? And so that's where like the routine is important. The things that fill your cup at the top so you can overflow onto everyone below. That's why it's so important. That's why we do this stuff, right? Dude, that's great. I love that analogy. Yeah, I haven't actually heard that before. Yeah, that is very true too because, um, and you know, I think a lot of it has to do with like as we get older too, right? Like I'm 30, how old are you again? I'm 47. You're 47. Yeah. Oh, Jesus, you don't look like you're 47. Oh, it's because you. you work out probably. That's right. <laughs> um, I think as you get older, you start to identify kind of like, um, you, let me not identify. You start to become self-aware yeah. of your weaknesses mm-hmm. versus like when you're younger, you're invincible. Everyone else is wrong. You're not wrong. Like every relationship you're in, if you get in an argument, they're in the wrong, right? Like if, if you, if you cheat on your girlfriend, she's the bitch, right? right. Like that's how you are in your twenties. <laughs> totally her and fault. It's all her fault. And then of course, again, she's in her twenties. If you ask her, she says the same thing. She's like, it's his fault. And you can never like be self-aware and identify those things. And I think a lot of it has to do with maturity for sure. Our brain is actually developed after 25. So that has a lot to do with it as well. But I think it's just experience. You know, I don't think there's anything that all the, you mentioned like all these people online saying there's a perfect routine, there's perfect this, per-. you just got to wait, man. You got to ride it out. You got to go through trial and error. You got to figure out what's best for you because there's so many people out there. There's 330 million people in the U.S. Like not every, not one person is going to have the right answer. Yeah. 
And there's no way we could do a clinical, you know, a clinical study on 330 million people. So you kind of have to figure out what's best for you and what's best for your routine because I do my research. I'm sure you do as well. I know what to do, right? I know what supplements to take. I know when to do my grounding and when the sun needs to hit my face and when I need to turn off my device at night, blah, blah, like all that bullshit I know it's written down. Right. And in a perfect world, I'd be able to do all that every single day and it's that perfect routine. But I feel like you need the chaos. You need the the you need the the wrench to just screw up everything. Yeah. Because I think you learn from that stuff. And that's what's so great about just waiting. Like if you're in your twenties or in your you're even 30s and you're just listening to this and you're like, eh, I don't figure it out. Like uh, my job sucks. My wife sucks. Like what? I, like just wait. Just take your time. Do the right things and just wait because like when you – you're never going to have it figured out. But I can guarantee you as you get older, especially in your 40s, you're going to get closer to figuring it out. And if you continue to watch online and watch these perfect formulas and compare yourself to that, it's stressful. Mm-hmm. Right? It's stressful to wake up seven days a week like Garrett Brecker, right? Like I love I love him, but he always says, I'm in Miami and I go downstairs and I do my grounding and then I do my ice plunge and my sauna and I train. Yeah, bro, because all you do is get paid to speak and you have thousands in the bank and there's I'm sure he has stresses, but yeah. twenty years ago he wasn't doing that routine. Right. So it's like if you try to compare yourself to that. That's asinine. You're, you're going to lose your mind because there's no no way that's sustainable. So I think yep. you just have to kind of like take everything with a grain of salt and just figure out what's best for you and try to do the right things. And then, you know, hopefully it'll happen. And and I think something that I've experienced anyways is I think it came late in my 30s and early 40s is the ability to look in the mirror and realize that I am the mm. cause of and solution, and solution to pretty much all of my problems. Like. Like mm-hmm. we already talked about, like, it's not her, it's not the job, it's not the mortgage, it's not, it, it's the things you're not doing to take care of them. And I spent most of my life running away from the hard thing, running away from the obstacle, running away from the challenging thing. And mm-hmm. it was honestly like talking to uh, Ryan Holiday and reading his books and literally the title, The Obstacle is the Way, completely changed my life. And I was like, oh, I've been doing this completely backwards. Like anytime something's mm-hmm. hard, anytime something's scary, my MO was run the other way as fast as possible. Do not accept responsibility. This is, this is for other people. But wow. now I know on the other side of that is the reward on the other side of that is the benefit and, and everything I'm looking for. So That's yes, fascinating. wait, like life will figure it, it, a way out, but also yeah. like stop looking at everyone else and everything else as the problem and start looking in the mirror. For sure. And you know, you can, you can only control what you can control, right? It's one of my favorite favorite sayings and my yeah. wife hates it because i say it all the time <laughs> um you know but not to get too dark or off topic but uh just you know today's thursday the 11th so i'm in tampa and uh on tuesday the 9th um there was a shooting at a place called armature works right and i was there yep um and i was probably i mean i saw it all go down uh i was maybe i don't know 20 yards away uh, from the pops and the shooting. And at the time, I didn't know exactly where it was or what, but later on, I found out. I mean, I was, you know, I could throw a rock and, and hit the shooter. And I was by myself. I was working uh, on some content for a client. And uh, obviously, there's a lot that I could say about that. But the one thing that I, I took away from it was like, I did everything right. You know, like I've. <laughs> Right. Like I, we have raised our daughter, I think great. And she's doing great. And I'm, I'm working out and I'm eating right. Like I'm doing everything right. And then I'm working with this client. That's great. And I'm going to help her grow her social media for her business. She loves it. Right. I'm getting paid for it. So it's, it's what I love to do. We're capturing some content. I'm videoing on my phone and then literally shots break out, out of my control. Yeah, And in that moment, if a gun ricocheted or, I mean, there was four people that got injured. Not one person was a perpetrator. It was all innocent bystanders that just, you know, bullets ricocheted or it missed. It wasn't even aimed at these people, but these were the innocent by. So it could have been me. Yeah, It, it could have been anybody. It could have been my business partner. And it's just like, the reason I bring it up is because A, it happened recently. Yeah, of course. But B, it's like, just, you can't, you could do everything perfect. Mm -hmm. but there is no perfect, right? Like life is going to throw you some shit all the time. And it seems like, and especially I reflect a lot 
on some of the things that happened last couple of years with me, but that in particular really hit me hard where you reflect on a lot of things. And I think the, the one thing that I learned from that was you cannot have everything together ever. No. Like when, and when you think you do, shit's going to happen. Mm-hmm. And I don't think it's because like there's this magical aura around you and then right when things go because everyone thinks that right like right. i don't get it like job was great and this and that and then i got fired like i don't understand why is the life out to get me right i don't think it's life's out. i just think that's just how shit is we just can't control anything like we're on this rock floating <laughs> in infinite <laughs> space even nasa and uh, astronomers have no idea 30 percent of what happens with our universe like there, it's all theories and get like no one knows like all right. this stuff. the The camera that I'm using is called a Canon, and we made up this technology. Like it's all made up. We're yeah. all inventing things, and we're just figuring new things out every day. Like we don't know anything. Doctors are learning new information all the time. In the fifties, they used to tell people smoke cigarettes because it's good for you. Like mm-hmm. we're stupid. Okay, we're humans. <laughs> we're going to make mistakes. So the fact that you think things are going to go your way, that's just irresponsible. And when you like can put that guard down, there's a little bit of a relief to it. I think there's a little bit of like, you know, this doesn't mean go streaking right Right. around a public school or anything. It just means, you know, do what you can and you're probably going to have a shitty day more often than not, but you're alive. And that's just fantastic. Like it's just, uh, yeah, it's it's just a different way of looking at things that just this week I've kind of thought about a little bit more i'm sure there, there's a a guy that i worked with for a while that he always used to say that you know the, the trick with life is we we're white knuckled on the steering wheel all the time trying to control it trying to drive it the way we want it to and the mm. more we let go of the steering wheel the more our hands open up to receive and i just always cool. thought that was such a beautiful analogy to just be like we are we're just like we're just clenched like why don't i have why can't i i just if i could only and then in a situation like you had where you're like, yeah. it could all be gone because I just went to the wrong coffee shop today. I had a similar, uh, somewhat a similar experience, not nearly as on uh, on the scene, but I was literally in uh, the parking lot of a place where there was a shooting hours later the same day, uh, about a year ago. And man, there's uh, there's just something about those moments where it's it's the bus that was a little too close on the sidewalk, the shooter that you just happened to miss or who had just happened to miss you. Those those are the, the wake up moments where you realize all this stuff that we worry about, all the stuff that gets us down, that grinds us, it's all bullshit. None of it matters. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's so true. Yeah, and it's uh you know, it's I I, I think it's called the um the burnt toast theory. Have you heard of this? The uh, the name of it's familiar, but I forget the, I forget what the context is. I'm definitely paraphrasing, so hopefully listeners won't hold me to this, but it has something to do with um when you burn your toast for breakfast and you're on your way to work, um, there's two ways you can look at it, right? Like you burnt your toast, shit, I got to make a new piece. Right. And the whole idea of the theory is that five minutes that it took you to make a new piece of toast, um, you could have gotten a car accident on the way. Right. Maybe there was a massive accident that you would have been on. Maybe you missed your flight because you ended up making that piece of toast and the flight ended up going down. And that's kind of the whole point of the theory is like uh, you don't know what's going to happen. So everything that does happen, good or bad, you kind of have to take it at like whatever comes forward is going to happen. It's just there's nothing you can do to control it. You could set everything in motion, but things are going to happen. It's going to happen like that's it's out of your control. Yeah. Um, But when something negative does happen, don't look at it like you've missed an opportunity because you might have gotten saved right, by by something. And that's kind of the whole idea of the burnt theory is like you look at the burnt toast like your day's ruined, right? Like, oh, my God, yeah. I'm going to be late to work. Yeah. Little do you know that burnt toast just saved your life because, you know, you could have gotten a car accident. So yeah. that's kind of the idea whole, of the whole theory. And um, I've been thinking about that a lot more recently, especially with our newborn, because, as you know, there's so many moments like that where yeah. you kind of look at it and you're like, I cannot believe – I had to do this and I missed this deadline or, you know, we forgot to do this. And then this happened. It's a lot of cause and effect. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. <laughs> and more often than not, it's negative typically is, is the, is the result. But then I also kind of looked at it like, 
it's not really negative because the cause and effect, even though the effect of whatever happened might have been negative, maybe we're late to work as an example, but I got to spend an extra five minutes with my daughter. Yep. And when you start looking at things like that, where that's the important stuff, like your perception of the actual incident needs to change a little bit. And when you can like start thinking like that, and it takes a lot of time, a lot of practice, and I'm not even there yet. Yeah. But when you could start kind of putting plans in motions to to think more like that, a lot of stuff doesn't bother you anymore because you, you look at things differently, right? It's all the stories you tell yourself. When you put that toast in, you weren't thinking, oh, this is going to burn. You were thinking, I'm going to grab this and I'm going to go. And when That's it right. doesn't go your way, the story is, oh, life. And, <laughs> and even in your situation where you went to go do work with that client, you weren't thinking, I'm, there's probably going to be a shooting today. Like, you right. were soaked. Like, you, were, you were psyched. But either way, the story we tell ourselves about the, the way this is going to turn out is never the way that it turns out. So the no. more that you can stop living in the future and worrying about and trying to control or stop regretting and thinking about and you know, feeling terrible about the thing you said when you were 12 and mm. just be where you are right now, yeah. there's a lot of peace right here. Kind of, uh, kind of no, ba- no matter how bad it gets. I would argue maybe in that coffee shop uh, last Tuesday, <laughs> probably not a lot of peace. Right. However, you know, the, yeah. the guru in me, like the, the, the Zen <laughs> Buddhist in me would want to be able to say, <laughs> In that moment, I was thinking, I'm not shot right now. I'm okay. I'm not shot right yeah. now. I'm okay. Because you were okay, even yeah. though it was an incredibly dangerous situation. Yeah. Yeah, and it's, it's weird being in that situation because I, I mean, as I was running and, you know, the people I was with, we, uh, we tried to do what we could to, to stay together. But it's so hectic. You don't necessarily worry about everyone else. Um, and, you know, we kept yelling out, active shooter, active shooter. And, and uh you had to go inside and kind of cut through this corridor to go to the parking lot that we were in. So like inside, you don't know if there's like, we didn't know if there was like five shooters surrounding the place. We didn't know. So we're like, as you're going in, you're kind of creeping and you're doing these things. And when I tell you, bro, like I've been working out for a long time and I've done some hardcore marathons and some Spartan races and I've, I've worked out, I've done kettlebell. Like I, I do hardcore fitness training. Yeah. I, my heart hurt when it was being, and I've never felt that before. I'm 30 years old. It was to the point where even on the all the driving home, it was like this pain that I was like, like I thought something was wrong with my heart, but it was pumping so fast. Like it never has the adrenaline's going through you. And the only thing I could think about the entire time I was running faster than anybody. I, I will say <laughs> at Armist Works, I did a video about this on Instagram. People made fun of me, but I'll stand by it. I'll even put it on your podcast to where (laughs) I'll say there was people that if I wasn't vigilant, I would have held us back from leaving certain places because they were out of shape Um, or just incompetent. Like they just wanted to take a photo or do something stupid because, you know, you don't know what it is, right? Like you don't know if a couple pops could be dishes breaking or something like you don't know. Right. So, but I knew, I knew because I've, you know, I've guns. So I'm, I'm aware that, it wasn't an AR, but it was definitely a pistol, and it was two of them because the the exchange was it was noticeable. Right. So I bolted, and a lot of people just in the comments are lighting me up, saying, "Well, I can't believe you did that. Like, what if it was nothing?" Okay, then what's the worst that happens? Everyone goes to their car. Right. 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 But if if you don't react like that, and it was something, now you got fifteen people on the ground. Yeah. Shot. So. Yeah. It's like it's better to be over prepared with that type of stuff. And the only time I was running when I was I was sprinting and I was getting out of that was all I could think about was my daughter and the fact that there's no fucking way that I'm dying here. So yep. um I've never ran that fast in my life. Yeah. Um, you know, after I checked in with my coworker to make sure they uh they had a place to go. Yeah. But yeah, it's just um, you know, you're right. You you can't really control those things and then there is some some gratefulness, but I think you kinda have to I thought I was grateful, like on a daily basis, you know, you wake up and you always tell yourself, I'm so happy I have my kids and my job. And, but we kind of like pretend to do this thing. I think a lot of us for maybe we want our friends and family and people on social media to think that we're good people. So we, you know, exude gratitude in a way that we feel is authentic. I don't know about everyone else, but not me. I, I was, I was grateful, but I was like grateful, like, behind the scenes, I really, of course I am grateful, but you know, behind the scenes, I'm like, 
there was little hidden things where I'm like, ugh, I can't believe this, and I can't. And there was kind of some negative devil talking. Yeah. Um, and I don't think a lot of people like to admit that. After that incident, though, I could tell you no question, there is not an ounce of me that is not grateful for life because oh, yeah. uh, I think when you have any type of situation where it's that or health issue, there's a there's a different there's a switch, yeah. and that's gratefulness. Yeah. So if you can get there without having the, <laughs> the <laughs> without the, the near death experience, yeah, that's, yeah, that's ideal. Then that's that's the key. <laughs> and you know, you hear like Gary V and all these gurus talk about it, and you're like, oh yeah, yeah, I do that, I do that. Yeah. You know, no, it's for for most of us, it's going through the motions. It's it's lifting right. the dumbbell, right? Like I'm not passionate about lifting this dumbbell, but it's going to build that muscle so that eventually. One day mm. I'll be able to go, oh, I am strong enough. I am grateful enough for this moment. But yeah, when, I, when I'm looking at that piece of paper every day and going like, I don't know, I guess coffee again. I'm, I'm grateful for the coffee. That, that'll yeah. do. Check the box. I did my, grat- my gratitude practice. It's very yeah. much just, just doing it for the sake of the practice and the routine yeah. and, and trying to get better at it. Yeah. And, you know, I don't think there's anything necessarily wrong with that. No. Again, going back to self-awareness, if you can identify it and realize – there's other things that you should be grateful for more. And I think putting things in different boxes too. Like, um, am I grateful for a job? Sure. Yeah. But I think gratitude needs to be like, I woke up today. Yeah. Other people didn't. Yeah. A lot of people I got food on. Yeah. I got, yeah. And more actually, <laughs> more people realistically probably have less food than you do in the world. Yeah. Even in the U.S. I mean, there's... You know, people on food stamps, they're not eating like you are. So, like, you need to be grateful if you go to a restaurant and spend $100. Yeah. Like, that's gratefulness. Yeah. So, I think, like, just looking at it like that to where um, we get so comfortable with the new iPhone and, you know, all the cool shit that's yeah. out there and the fact that you can just take a really dope picture from your phone and you can listen to music on Spotify through your car with a click of a button. Like yeah. we get so comfortable and so quickly too, right? Like, Oh yeah. I mean, you know, you're, you're in your forties. Mm-hmm. I remember like, I don't even, I feel like it's been going on for only 10 years and we have this AI fucking, yeah. we're going to Mars by 2025. It's like, <laughs> right. what? Yeah. Like I remember just, it felt like the other day that I was chewing on bubblegum cigarettes and I had a beeper. Yeah, and and internet. What's that? What's this new email thing? Like, yeah, mm. trust me, I, I was on the other side of this whole. Switch. Oh, and bro, <laughs> and by the way, like I was having this conversation with a buddy of mine too, and he goes, he said he was struggling with patience, and he was my age, and I go, patience. I go, bro, do you remember Napster, right, and LimeWire? Patience. How Dude, about we cassettes? Used to... How about waiting for this ca- the cassette right. to come out at the store to drive to the store? If your mom would drive you to the store to buy the cassette, yeah. come on, are you kidding me? It's like, dude, you know patience, <laughs> motherfucker. You just don't do it. Right. Like, what do you mean patient? It's only because in the past 10, 20 years, we've gotten so spoiled yeah. where, like, I even catch myself occasionally too. Like, have you ever, like, been on your phone and then, like, Instagram doesn't load? It takes a couple seconds. Right. And you're like, what the fuck? Is Instagram down? Right. Dude, it's been five seconds. Relax. It right. has to communicate <laughs> to a satellite <laughs> outside of our fucking <laughs> outside of Earth and then come back down right. to <laughs> Silicon Valley. And then it goes to your like, right. relax. We're bro. so like, spoiled. If, if it's, the food isn't at my door in 10 minutes that I pushed a button to get that I you know use a credit card to pay for. We are so spoiled and it just yeah. it makes us softer for it. That's so funny. Yeah, that's another thing too, the food and everything. And I think that's why like if you're involved in some sort of physical activity, whether it's fitness or running or, you know, whatever it is, um, or even doing like plunging or sinus like contrast therapy, if you're if you do something like that, it really does humble you. Oh yeah. You know, and I think that's why to your point earlier, when you don't work out and you're gone for a month on vacation, you feel like a piece of shit mm-hmm. because you know, it's not necessarily a lot of it is out of the routine, but it's so important to your health to do these types of things. It's in our nature. Like, yeah. you know, we're, we're primates. We're supposed to fucking throw things around and, you know, lift up women above our heads so we can cross a lake, yeah. you know, like we're, we're supposed to be able to do this type of stuff. So when you can't do that, your body's like, okay, 
power yeah. down. Yeah. Like it just shuts down. So and every I, time, every time you do successfully do a hard thing that is safe, like getting in the cold water or going to the gym mm. and lifting something heavy, you take that to the time when it is hard. Like life really is hard and you can mentally go back to, Oh, well, if I can do that, this right. is nothing. And that, I mean, that's, that's the whole right. point. That's why we do it. Yeah. I mean, it's literally the hardest thing you're going to do Yeah, in the morning. That's why I always try to do in the morning. Yeah. You know, I hop in freaking 55 degrees for at least five minutes and I just fucking, I power through and I do my breath work and the sun's hit me and oh man, it's just, you get out, you do your grounding, mm-hmm. you touch the earth, you get dirty, yeah, you know, and, and even if it's rainy, it doesn't matter. Like I just get out and I do it. And then, you know, this is 9am I'm done with everything. Yep. The rest of the day is smooth sailing. It's all easy it's after beautiful. that. It's all easy. Uh, yeah. After a, that. a guy cuts me off at, you know, in the, in the car. Psh, it's all good. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Have at it, bro. You got to take a shit. You want to rush? Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. It's all good. Yeah, Whatever good. you got, way more important than what I got. Way going more on. important. I got nothing. <laughs> what am I going to go to a job? Who right. cares? Right. You know, exactly. like, it's all good, man. Yeah. So it's, yeah, I, I think people do need to get involved in it, which is exciting that, you know, um, you have this podcast where it's, it's all about fitness. And and um, I listened to the one where you're talking about Italy and going overseas, and that's fascinating, too. Were you only in Italy for the month? Uh, I spent a week in uh, Barcelona, but the rest of the uh, about 12 days or so was in Italy. Nice. Which parts? Uh, Northern Italy. We were in. Um, we spent some time at Lake, uh, Lake Como and then a little bit of time in nice. Milan and then down to Reggio Calabria and then over to Rome. Nice. Beautiful. Yeah, it was amazing. Yeah. And, man, I heard you talking about this on your show with one of your guests about uh, just, just the food difference, right? Like, yeah, yeah. The, the, it, to be in a place where there is literally government regulation and law enforcement that makes sure that the food is of the highest quality, yeah. where here the, uh, the, the enforcement is it better be the highest profit possible, right? Like yeah. you, can, you can feel the difference when, when they're like all the rules are out the window and no supplements, not really work. I mean, walking a ton, but like not working out, not really paying sure. attention to any sort of macros or calories or anything. Just eating whatever we wanted, whenever we wanted, and I felt awesome. And you probably didn't gain any weight. Gain no weight. Like felt yeah. felt totally fine. And then I come home and, and try to simulate it, but like the store bought bread versus like the baked fresh in the bakery that day bread, like all sure. the differences. It's yeah. incredible how much like yeah. even when you think you're doing well here, trying mm-hmm. to do your best, it's still yeah. just some manufactured process thing that just wrecks your body. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's, um, it's scary too, especially as, um, as a father, it's hard to, um, fathom 50 years what it looks like, because, you know, if you really think about it, like let's, let's pretend the world started, um, in the, you know, 2000 years ago plus, um, you know, started way before that, but let's just say it even started in 1776. Okay. Declaration was signed. Let's say we had good nutrition back then and somewhere along the line, it's only been 300 years, some, not even somewhere along the line, we completely destroyed everything there is to do with food and drink. Mm -hmm. Even our water isn't real water and it's wrapped up in plastic and it's, it's sitting in trucks. Mm -hmm. Um, And those plastics have been proven, literally proven where microplastics go into the water and we ingest it. And the average person has millions of pieces of, of microplastics in their bloodstream. Yeah. That's been 300 years. Yeah. Which really is probably closer to 150 because I mean, we didn't even have electricity. <laughs> you know? So it's right. like, we didn't have windshield wipers in our cars until, right. you know, a couple people ago. So we really fucked this thing up. And even our grandparents, I mean, our grandparents, yeah. Eight better than we do, even if we try to eat what they ate. That's right. So realistically, it's probably 100 years we fucked this up. Um, and I think it all started with good intentions. I think, you know, it was like, oh, we need to feed the the people, right? Be, we, how can we figure out a way to get more out of this potato, more right. out of this strawberry, more? And then eventually they realize if we cut corners, now we can actually make more money. Yeah. And then they're like, well, what, what are they going to do? Not eat? They're going to eat. Right. And then even if they die, who cares? Because in America, it's like every 10 seconds a baby's born. So there's this constant like turnover, like a restaurant, mm-hmm. where they're not worried about going out of business. I mean, it's America, yeah. of course. 
They're like, what are people going to stop coming here? Are people, <laughs> is everyone going to leave? Like, they know they're, they're not stupid and they'd rather soak this in, which is why like companies like FDA, I talk about all the time. And it's just, it's these massive corporations that are just literally taking our tax dollars and killing us. Mm-hmm. I mean, because if you look at like even strawberries, you know, we talk about the food. Even strawberries, there was an interesting study where they took a basket of strawberries, like just a regular basket for like seven bucks at the store, and they squeezed out all the strawberry juices, completely drained it, Mm -hmm. and then crystallized it. Turns out there's enough pesticides in that batch of strawberries to spray throughout an entire strawberry field. (laughs) So that means these assholes are not even just spraying pesticides. They're spraying so much. Yeah. That you can actually take a batch of strawberries and respray the field, which means maybe do less pesticides. But no, no, yeah. you can't do that, right? right? Because we have to make these things juicy and they have to grow faster. And yeah. it's just like – And it's got to look perfect in the store or nobody's <laughs> going to buy it. And then the store is going to lose money and then we're going to lose money. And it's all profit. It's all money. It's fucking unbelievable. Um, yeah. Did you see that thing about Lunchables that just came out the other day? No. <laughs> Just look it up if you have time, dude. Yeah. Look up Lunchables uh, lead study. Oh, God. And, yeah, there was, you know, because Lunchables are required for the school curriculums, most of them anyway, mm-hmm. where they're part of the lunch program, right. if your kid's in the lunch program. So, but Lunchables turns out that they have, I think it's, uh, I don't want to misquote, but I think it's over 40% of the allowed limit for lead. Good Lord. But this is approved by the FDA. And in order to get more protein, right, because they have to kind of like gauge this because the kids need more protein. So they added more meat, which is processed meat, Mm -hmm. turkey and all that stuff and Lunchables. They added more of that in the packaging. So to offset that statistic, they just added more protein to lessen the amount. But really, you're just adding process. It's not like it's real chicken. You're just adding processed bullshit. So now these kids are ingesting All this process. And then we look at like, okay, so all this food that came out and then you look at like the spike in, you know, autism, disease, cancer, and all these poor kids, you know, even in my, in our generation, I mean, you know, this is really when it started. You add that plus the fact that social media, right, came about this like pyramid of just everything is rising and everything's getting worse and worse. And then when you get these poor kids up to the top and they're like all messed up in the head, what's, what, what do the parents do? Oh, let's give them Adderall. Yep. Yeah, they're 10 years old. Yeah, let's just pop them on Adderall. They'll be able yeah. to focus. Yeah. It's just like, dude, it's crazy, man. It's a dangerous spiral. Dangerous spiral we're on. It's terrifying. Man, it's but, been a great conversation. You have similar conversations on your show. Tell us about humanity and hashtags. Yeah, man. So it's uh, it's really just a show I started uh, a few years ago where, um, like yourself, I wanted to just talk about different things like wellness, productivity, social media, and I just wanted to have good objective conversations with uh, fellow humans. And um, yeah, that's what we do. So I, I put out episodes every week. Um, you could find it everywhere. Um, just search uh, humanity and hashtags on all platforms. And I put everything on YouTube as well. So if you want to watch it there, uh, but yeah, we're going good, man. Episode a week and, uh, and we're having a blast. Awesome, man. We'll have the links to that in our show notes for this episode. Thank you so much for your time. Anything uh, key here that we did not touch on you want to make sure we mention? <laughs> No, Jeremy, the only thing I would say is if um, if you don't already to subscribe to Jeremy's show, you need to because there's some great content and uh, you do a good job. So just keep doing what you're doing. And the more we can talk about fitness and get people active and get people thinking that there is grass that's greener on the other side and uh, you are better to, to take care of yourself. You just got to do the research and it's going to take a little time and a little effort, maybe a little money, but um, you only get one life, man. So don't fuck it up. All right, my thanks to Tony Berardo. He's the host of the Humanity and Hashtags podcast. You can find the link to that show and to him in the show notes for this episode at thefitmess.com. I hope the stories he shared really helped you to shift your perspective on all that you have to be grateful for. And I hope that some of the little things that he shares about his day-to-day struggle to be a little bit better can help you find a path to do the same. And before we go, it really does mean a lot to us that you spend time with us like this every week. If you've gotten any value out of this conversation and you know someone else who might benefit from this conversation, please do share it with them so that we can accomplish our goal of helping as many people as possible that share the same kind of struggles that you and I do. So hit that share button today and come back and join us again next week at thefitmess.com. We know this podcast is amazing and it doesn't seem to lack anything, but we need a legal disclaimer. 
Prior to implementing anything discussed in this podcast, it is your responsibility to conduct your own research and consult your physician. You should assume that Jeremy and Zach don't know what they're talking about, and they're not liable for any physical or emotional issues that occur directly or indirectly from listening to this podcast.